Welcome to the IVM Podcast Network. Hey guys, you're listening to the Geek Food Podcast with uh, me, Tejas, and Jishnu, who's also Nerd. a person. He is a, he, every voice. every week he comes up with like on the spot. You cannot believe how talented this man is. He comes up with a new theme song for the Geek Food Podcast every single week. Today's one is what? Today's one is um, the Cheers theme song. So that's not really um, original at all. Then just uh, replaced with the word um, nerds. Nerds. Okay. Cool. Go. Oh, you already Nerds. did it. Oh, you already did it. it. You, you missed oh, it. Oh, man. It I totally happened. missed your brilliance. Okay, cool. So we It was in 7 8, by the way. Musically. Musically. Yeah. I don't know anything about music. I'm just a nerd. So. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man. Uh, today's episode, we're going to be talking about some stuff which is but just hey, around hey, the corner. Hey, hey. Yeah. I'm really excited about this episode. That's you. It's because. Um, you can tell hey, from your voice. Hey, hey because yeah. um, there's like. What? This really. Uh, Famous um, guy that totally I famous. Have we a, have a guest big, on the big, show. I have a big man crush on him. We have like we have had three episodes and we already have a special guest he's on the first. He's quite dreamy. Yeah, um, actually, he's not really special because like he's actually part of this hey, team. So it's don't like, put words in my mouth. He's special to me. Yeah, he's special in our hearts, in every <laughs> part of my body, in my eight bit heart. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, man. Uh, you may know him, him from uh, VH1's Music Diaries, which yes. has like a hundred plus. 193 episodes, I believe, exactly. Wow. Um, I count This I've man is like um, the Larry David of our time, of our scene here. Larry David's still alive. So I mean, like, he, he's still Larry David. Well, Larry David of our scene here. Yeah. Like, oh, that was him. Whoa, geez, oh, geez, where did he come from? <laughs> ah, wait, were we talking about I me? I didn't yeah. see you enter the room. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> so we have a special guest in the studio. It's Dinkar Duvedi. He is part of uh, the Geek Fruit team and he's Hello. quite a nerd. And actually, you know, we started doing this with him in the first place. And just because he's such a busy man, he's the only one with a real job, I guess, between all of this us. This is true. Yeah. But his office is like literally, you know, five minutes away. Throw, so yeah. it was not hard for him to come on his lunch break. He's just like, sure, I guess I could join you. I was but- fired from the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but it's nice to be here where everybody nerds your name. Oh, nice! See? That's, that's how you. That's, that's See, how you plug he, in the he, He's a special I, guest. I just You're terrible. The this is he what I'm sung, here to do, guys. He did the verse Dude, and the bridge just and the middle eight. Suck. I just went to the chorus. <laughs> Look, just it's you radio. Now, thank no, you. no, no, no. It's radio. You know, you got to do the hits. You you got to give them the chorus. Give them what they want. You just, I just went separated forward. the hits into bridge, <laughs> verse, and chorus. So Look, I don't make the rules. I just break them. Hey, man! The you chorus of Thriller was a number one hit. The bridge, not so much. What is the bridge of Thriller? I, I there is no there is bridge. Music. It's Jonathan Price just speaking. Uh, no, Jonathan Price? Oh, Vincent yeah. Price. Vincent Price. Oh, who's Jonathan Price? He's the actor. He is the <laughs> villain of Tomorrow Never Dies. And speaking of actors... No. What? <laughs> Segway. Segway. Boom. He's a just pro. done. He should just leave. <laughs> yeah. He should just He could do this podcast now. literally by himself. <laughs> but yeah, man, we're going to be talking about some heavy stuff uh, to begin yeah. with. Alan Rickman is gone. Yeah. A lot of people, man, and this, this is just is, the this beginning is a of the year. Crummy start of the year. Man. Yeah, this is just lots of great artists what the are and not he was, with us anymore. Like, wasn't it the last episode that we talked about David Bowie? Yeah, we it did. was the very last episode we talked about David Bowie. Sixty nine died of cancer. Yeah, right Some, after that. Right after which Alan Rickman, sixty nine, died, died of cancer. Of cancer. What the hell? Yeah, it was just, just it was just uncanny and it was it was weird. Obviously, I mean, like you, the thing is, like I I feel like every time like something like this happens, you don't. Uh, there's like no. Like, you don't expect it. Yeah. It's very unexpected. Like, it's not like when, like, <laughs> I mean, don't mean to put it this way, but like Keith Richards, yeah. you know. Well, you know, B.B. King, I'll give you an example, going down that route. B.B. Exactly. King was, he was in hospice for a, for a while. Exactly. So, like, we yeah. had like, a month yeah. of where he was like looking really bad. And then there so was, that was this was amazing tribute that was done in Bombay by this kick-ass band. And this great thing <laughs> that happened in Bombay. Let's not talk about that, but it was really good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was good. Uh, but anyway, but yeah, man, it's just weird when you know, it just happens. So and and now again, like Glenn Frey from you know from the, the Eagles. Eagles. Just yeah, all of again, these feel untimely. Just very untimely yeah. and really and just like all of them are such great like artists. You know, just yeah. like it's just like a sudden like thing. That's just but you know what I like to, the way I like to think about, it, especially for Rickman and Bowie. They were born in 1947. 
So they were sort of the product of Indian independence, as far as I'm concerned. You know, they uh, they were. They, you uh, mean we got independence and boom, they were there, born. There, there was a, there was a point to this. Comment, yeah, which uh, <laughs> you have one and a half hours to find it. Swiftly <laughs> left the room. But yeah, man, we're gonna. So uh, in this episode, we're gonna be talking about Alan Rickman. We'll just you know, like give a small tribute to some of his awesome work. He's done yeah. like a bunch of stuff, man. Actually, let's let's let's. What's your favorite? Which is your favorite? I start? have to be partial to Galaxy Quest. Galaxy Quest. I have Galaxy to. Quest. Yeah, like, probably. It, it's just such a fun it's movie. hilarious it's so fun yeah. it, I love it because it doesn't take itself seriously but what it does do it does like really really well like yeah. it's um, it's a very light hearted thing obviously it's a comedy so you know it's not gonna get too serious at any point but he actually has the only role that like even before the fact that he yeah, yeah, recently, yeah. like I would I could watch like a certain part of it where um, there's one section where one of the guys Quillick or something his name is uh, one of the alien guys the al- good guy aliens yeah. dies in his arms yeah. and he says like even though before we have never met yeah. I always looked at you as a father to me wow. and then he gives him his by Graptas nice. <laughs> be avenged and I was like oh the fields yeah the, the dude is a Shakespearean actor he's a great uh, he's, he's a Shakespearean he actor man. In, in sci-fi like you yeah. don't see that every day yeah you don't see somebody that can do that like go from stage of like real hard dramatic acting and take that into a science fiction fantasy universe but and not seem out of place yeah exactly like, I think that's what he was best at he was just like he's just like through and through a great actor and it doesn't matter what kind of environment you put him in. Like for me, like my, one of my favorite. It's weird because I like I don't think people think about this often. Like, but uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. He's Marv. Guide, yeah. yeah, he's like that's like anyway in the books. Like that character is hilarious, and he yeah. just nailed it. Like you know, and when they cast him, I was also like you know, wow, well, Alan Rickman's gonna be Marv, like the most because, depressed yeah, that's robot not, in that's the not universe. What you picture him as. Yeah, exactly, and like. Yeah, you know the whole the, my brain's the size of a planet yeah. you know they have me doing like these kind of errands and stuff it's just it's like just the uh, it was just hilarious and I didn't know that Alan Rickman could do this kind of like like this super dry kind of comedy you know like yeah. you see him as like you know this really serious actor but yeah, yeah he killed but it man even like a few moments in, in Galaxy Quest as well Galaxy yeah. Quest and Hitchhiker's Guide right? yeah both great comedic dancers. what about you your favorite uh, performance Die Hard, man. Die Hard. You know, die hard. See, if, I, if it wasn't Marv, it would have been Hans Gruber. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah, because Die Hard is... Like, that movie was as good as it was because of Bruce Willis because of Alan Rickman. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. He he totally... And, you know, though, Jeremy Irons is his, like, younger brother. I always <laughs> found that, like, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> That's just great, right? Oh, man. It, anyway, terrific actor. But yeah, Hans Gruber. Snape yeah. also, of course. Snape, I mean... You have, you have, you to, have mention to mention Snape. Snape. Yeah. yeah. No, he was great as Snape. Like, in fact... Uh, again, like again, you know, we're not. I don't think all either of us are. Uh, are you uh, fans yeah, of the? Are, are you a big Harry Potter, Potter fan? The movies, I, the yes. movies. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the movies? movies, not as much. Huh. So no, no. I was yeah. super into the books. Yeah, of course. I, like, I like, books. weaned off the movies. What do, you, what do you think of the movies? I I like the movies. I yeah. kind of like drifted away from them towards the end because they just ended up taking too long to come out. Unfortunately, <laughs> did you watch them all? Uh, yeah, of yeah, course. yeah. yeah. So. I, I've seen them all as well, yeah. but yeah. I think it was like most of it was hit, hit or miss. It's I mean, pretty hit or miss. Yeah. yeah, but I feel like the the casting throughout the movies has always been pretty impeccable. Like they find these great True. guys, and the Alan British was on like, them. It's, it's the, the British it's the army. army. <laughs> it's, it's, it's the entire BAFTA nomination list. This is so true. Yeah, one, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. They just shot. got like pretty much everyone. Mm-hmm. I think that's how they wanted it. Also, to kind of the whole reason why people even took Harry Potter. Like, I mean, it wouldn't have had that same effect if like people like you know like we were talking about David Thewlis and um, you know uh, Timothy Spall is uh, what do you call it. Um, Wormtail Wormtail yeah. Yeah. That's name. Great actor You know Petty just like They had an yeah. insane cast Like uh, And it was that Nice older generation Not mm-hmm. the new one So there was no Benedict Or anything like that yeah. Though By the way Here's my two cents Benedict Cumberbatch The next Alan Rickman Thoughts Go Well he has huh. a great voice Much like Alan Rickman True. Sir. He, yeah. he does a good vil- Alan Rickman great, impersonation. great villain He does an amazing Alan Rickman Yeah that's, there's that one video Him and Tom yeah. Hiddleston Yeah Yeah, yeah. But, uh, it's oh, Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Tom Hiddleston. Uh, so that's the new generation, I, I, I suppose, of the you know the British, uh, you know, the BAFTA nomination uh, list. <laughs> acting, acting monarch. Can either of you do an Alan Rickman? Um, no. You can try. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I need to. Uh, actually, I, I, I could wait. Well, no, we we'll, we'll, have like, reach for it. It like starts from like at the bottom. Give me a line. Just give me a line, and I'll do it. Uh, Feed life. Me. Don't talk to me about life. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, 
Le- uh, AI it would be like oh, la- 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 no I can't, do it. I can't I'm trying so hard right now <laughs> I, I, I think you do better than my attempts <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but don't talk to me <laughs> <laughs> not bad no, uh, just speak very staccato yeah that's he, it that's yeah, good inflection done yeah about it yeah good that's good that's great All right, let's go home. Good show, guys. Great show, guys. All right, okay, cool. Uh, we're going to take a small a fitting break. fitting tribute. We're going to take a small break. And then we're going to talk about the real stuff, which is why nobody takes our stuff seriously. <laughs> Not us. No, us also, Jishnu. You know what? I'm about this, like... I've had it up to here and I'm pointing at, like... A Pretty high hand. up. Re- quite high. <laughs> yeah. cool. He's had it up like, till there. Till there. And yeah, we're going to talk about why nobody takes science fiction so seriously, especially in India, man. Mm-hmm. And then world over when it comes to like, because the Oscars are out. Oscars around the corner. Yeah, so we're going to talk about it. We'll Let's take a short that. break and we'll be back. See ya. Now, if you want to listen to some brilliant indie music from all over the country, it's really simple. You can find me on Made in India. It's madeinindia.in. My name is May, and it's spelled M-A-E-D. Now, I've had some great artists on the show, including the likes of Nikhil D'Souza, The Cognac Net, Last Remaining Light, Tejas Menon, The Other People, Alicia Pays, Lakshmi Bomb, Vasudha Sharma, Ankur Tavadi, and so many more. Now, if you want to subscribe, you can go to iTunes or or Stitcher or your favorite podcast app or you can find me on my website that's madeinindia.in that's M-A-E-D or on Twitter and Facebook on Made in India. Cool, we're back on the Geek Food Podcast with me, Tejas, Jishnu is here and Dinkar. Hello. The first, hi, how's it feeling, man? It's your first episode on, on our very young podcast. <laughs> how's the rodeo? <laughs> Don't worry, kid. You'll get used to it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty used to it already. You know, this, this feels like a regular day. This is exactly what this we do anyway. This is pretty much how we talk anyway. Yeah. You could say, you are our new hope. I came up with that myself. You can keep it. So, you know, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just bypass that. <laughs> But you know what? In uh, Star Wars Rebels, the first like it was not a trailer it was kind of like an opening video yeah do you see it it's like three and a half minutes long what do you think of that the the what the the, the trailer for the season se- second half of the season oh I've not seen it oh, you haven't seen it because I have still stuck on that last episode the oh, future what? of the force yeah it's yeah no episode. it's called uh, legacy yeah I've still not that's a great episode it. so yeah <clears throat> I, 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 no when the show began it was like they did this kind of starting kind of opening like just to kind of introduce the series and his mm-hmm. characters and stuff like that and in that they have Uh, ben Kenobi so it's kind of slightly mid-aged kind of uh, pre-hermit craziness and he's like he says uh, we need to basically retire into like you know like the like just the, the, the corners of the, <laughs> the galaxy yeah. and in time a new hope will arise so it was really cool that they like plugged in that little that thing you know it was, it was quite cool I don't know man I'm, a, I'm, I'm happy huge, for you yeah, that I'm, 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 very, I'm very happy for you that's really nice but yeah. I did see yeah, yeah this this uh, trailer yeah how's um, it on second half of the season right you know, does it end on a cliffhanger oh, or something like that I was really upset with it Because, okay, I, I think I, mentioned this, I think I mentioned this uh, when we were talking about the BVS uh, trailer, like, last week. Or, uh, you mean when we talk about ago. trailers in general? In general, mm-hmm. yeah. I mentioned that, you know, I, I genuinely think the trailers can do more harm than good. And they more often do harm than good for the movie, as, as far as my viewing experience goes. And this one... One, it was three and a half minutes long. When, when is a trailer ever three and a half it's minutes long? It's not really a trailer. They never do... That's what I'm saying. They well, never this, do trailers. This, this, they do was, like, this was a trailer for like the second half of the season. Like a overview. Right. But then yeah. they showed you all the reveals of like which characters are coming. Like we like they show us Princess Leia yeah. in action. They've, they've already like, put out a teaser on that. Yeah. And they, they showed... Uh, I forget who... I try, I actively tried to block out what I was watching. Because okay. like, I don't want to know all yeah, this yeah, stuff yeah, in, yeah, a, yeah, in a trailer yeah, like this. Yeah. I was very excited to see a lot of characters and a lot of the story arcs that were happening. And you know, who was teaming up with who and and all these yeah. things they were basically giving you like the main plot points for like a good 7 8 maybe even Episode? 10 episodes or more and i was yeah. like well i didn't need that i'm excited mm. to see it all you have to do is tell me that the thing is coming back but you know and, having said that the you know, first trailer which came out for season 2 was amazing because that they introduced like darth vader mm-hmm. and stuff like that. it was <clears throat> that was epic i loved that trailer and like just they kind of did like kind of like what star wars did with force awakens they did like a lot of these vista shots you know these mm-hmm. large mm-hmm. widescreen kind of shots yeah, yeah, and they yeah. introduced the, the the whole of the next like arc of the i know, really i love that first not trailer. not only cuz like Which obviously the partial is all held to it but yeah. i genuinely believe that the marketing campaign for force awakens and the trailers that they did I think are the best yeah. trailers I've ever seen because I, they didn't they didn't yeah. tell me too it's much all JJ, at all. It it's was all JJ. Just the right amount. Yeah. 
I don't think it'll be the same for the next movie. Because JJ is all about the whole mystery box. I mean, he made one in the film also. And it's just like, he's always been about never revealing what like his cars are. I don't think that's going to happen for the next film. I'm pretty sure he's going to have like a fairly... So he doesn't have... So he's not Joss Whedoning the universe of He's producing, right? He's producing it, but like he's not going to... You know, it's like... How Joss Whedon really had a say in every single Marvel film that has come out yeah, in the yeah, phase two. Like, pretty yeah. much everything is Joss Whedon. Yeah. I, I don't know if he has that kind of thing. I don't know if he's going to do, like, I episode th- I mean, I, I have faith in Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, she's I love her. Kathleen, Kathleen, yeah, she's yeah, I, I think she's one so, of the driving forces yeah. behind the marketing campaign as well. Wow, which how was do we always cool? end up talking about Star Wars, I man? I know. I was just going to start this whole thing about how I'm excited for... Uh, like, <laughs> 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 what are you Let's move on. No, let's do that. What Ryan Johnson. Yeah. I'm not, so I'm not a fan of his last movie at all. Like Looper is the one he made, right? Ryan Johnson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he made two films. Did like, he do Godzilla? Who's that? Brick no, that's Gareth and Edwards. Brick. Brick I really like, but then again, Brick is very different kind of movie. Uh, film. Brothers Bloom, awesome film. Really was good. Was that film. Ryan Johnson? Yeah, that was good. That is a good movie. It's a great film. Uh, Mark Ruffalo, Adam, uh, uh, Adrian Brody, Adrian Brody, Adam Brody. Damn. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, great film. And this one, and uh, Rachel Wise as well, and in a very bizarre role. Wait, she, Adrian Brody, I know that name. Is Pusty the guy in the OC? No, that's Adam that's Brody. <laughs> Adam Brody. Are you doing a thing there? Hotly, <laughs> or were you just genuinely confused? I was genuinely confused. Oh, okay. yeah, Adrian no, Brody Adrian is, the, Brody. is the, pianist. the pianist. Yeah, the pianist. The Oscar award winning film Adrian by... Uh, I love that guy. And I know, he's I know the, the highly... Is he Adrian Brody? We Adrian Brody. Brody. Yes. Okay. He, yeah, he, from he, Predators, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the sequel yeah. to Predator. The Darjeeling Limited. Yeah, the Darjeeling uh, Limited. I, I love it. Let's like, name some more Adrian Brody films. Uh, um, Midnight in Paris. Midnight in Paris. Mm-hmm. Wes Anderson films. <laughs> Next. Wes Anderson films in general. Yeah. Was he in. Was he, he, th- in fact, that's one of my favorite roles ever, where he plays one? Salvador so, Dali. I love that. Actually, nice. I saw that movie again a few weeks ago. It's one of my favorites. It's, so good. it's, it's one of Woody Allen's best. It also. Absolutely. Yeah. Is. And he, I think he won. It got me. By the way, he won an Oscar for it. He did, yeah. Yeah, he did. For, for the, Salvador for, Dali? I think, for, no, not, oh, no, not Woody, uh, Woody Allen. Woody Allen, yeah. It's a brilliant movie. Yeah, it it actually film. got me on a literary kick when I saw it. Yeah. Like, I went out and I, like, actually yeah. went to a library. Like, a real grown-ups library. Libraries mm-hmm. Like a library library. It's, like, become and the... actually, I, I, like, I actually checked out, like, some Faulkner <laughs> and Hemingway. I wow. genuinely read because of that movie. I was like, this Man, libraries happen. have become, like, <laughs> the Ark of the Covenant, true. man. Yeah. It's hard to find those. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, you know why I think the movie was good? Because that's the only movie that Woody Allen has actually... Like sat down for some time and thought about it and written it. Like every other film, he's like a national treasure, you know. Like he just yeah, keeps like churning out. He's like an industry by himself. Like Absolutely. just every year, like a film. But with that comes a caveat of like you're putting out everything that comes to your head. So it's kind of like that's now. But yeah. he like so his early period films, especially like after he so he had this whole phase where he was all slapstick comedy and stuff, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which stopped when he did Annie Hall. Annie Hall, yeah, yeah. yeah. In fact, which is another good thing. Star, Star Wars, Wars, yeah, or the Oscars, yeah, mm-hmm. in 1977. Come 28? full circle, so yeah, <laughs> let's call it. We're professionals, we're professionals. And in case you didn't know, because I'm <laughs> sure you didn't. All, th- there's a there's I'm a big sure chart up didn't. on the wall that has this entire plot, uh, map plotted out. <laughs> yeah. We so just speaking it's actually of written on the window. The Oscars and Star Wars. <laughs> Let Dinkar be the one to to guide us. Seriously, into the we should just leave. Why yeah. are we even here? No, but yeah, man, that's that that is the problem in the Oscars. So Star Wars, yeah, the man. only one that's ever been. Nominated? At, no, the, no, the only no, they were all nominated, but the yeah. one that won the most, I think, was was the first Star Wars. Yeah. It got like f- six awards. It was nominated for ten, yeah. which was quite cool. Yeah, uh, nominated for uh, for pretty much everything, including Best Picture at did, that time. Did Strikes Back win anything? N- it won again. Like I think it won a technical award, but yeah. like uh, and this year, so the nominations are out. Does anybody yeah. have them on hand, by the way? Yeah. Yeah, so uh, I, I think they have five nominations this year, which is great because they, but they're all technical, right? Which is fine. Which is fine. Yeah, because it. I don't think it should be well the should be. best picture no, race at all. No, no, no. But then there are a lot of films that don't deserve to be there, like. including one, which is so funny because our whole thing is like science fiction doesn't get the, yeah. the seriousness that it deserves, doesn't get nominated at the Oscars, and the one that did is yeah. just like not no. as it, it doesn't. I don't know if it should be there. The Martian, yeah, obviously, yeah, but Ridley Scott. Martian. Yeah, love Ridley Scott though. I mean, like he great filmmaker he's done some like, like I mean Gladiator yeah. is easily one of my favorites. I think the reason that The Martian got it uh, got the nom is because much like say Castaway you yeah. know it's it's got that whole one man show kind of thing sure. and, like the Oscars love either a socially or racially conscious movie yeah. they love movies that you know are historically based about some massive event yeah 
or That's they very love, true. or they love one man against the world kind of movies. Um, so, so Scott Pilgrim was now nominated. <laughs> <laughs> Which, Which, hey, in our hearts, that yeah. that movie might be one of the best movies of all it's, time. Uh, Edgar Wright as at his finest. Yeah. Let's yeah. just leave it at that. But yeah, uh, yeah man. So uh, you just want to run us through the, yeah. the names, right. man. So I am going to announce a picture. This oh is, my god! This is, this is do as big a deal is, as the actual it. nomination. Please do it in your Alan Rickman right. voice. Uh, no, yeah, please. I think I've lost that one, but all right. First up, The Big Shot. Yeah. yeah. So this is a film uh, which has Christian Bale, who's I think nominated also for Best Supporting Actor again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome guy. He probably yeah. is yeah. amazing in it. Steve Carell is also there in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So also another actor. It's, who it's, made it's that a big movie. Kind of playing against Ryan that, Gosling, so yeah. including like Adam McKay is doing something yeah. fairly serious. Yeah. yeah. Adam yeah. McKay is like like famously uh, you know comedy. He's from that Judd Apatow I guess yeah. school yeah. of thought. Yeah. Anchorman. Yeah. 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 Exactly. The most random Judd Apatow comedy possibly. One of my favorites. I mean. Pretty great. Yeah. You can't argue. Yeah. With that. Afternoon delight, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, but yeah, anyway, so. Oh man, I thought we were going to break out into afternoon. Afternoon delight? Yeah. Yeah. We won't even know what key it's on. <laughs> yeah, let's not. Let's not. No, let's not go with that. Bridge of Spies, director Steven Spielberg. But a Spielberg nomination <clears throat> seems almost like customary. Yeah. But this was. So, Dinkar, you haven't seen it? No. You've seen it, Tejas? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, it. I thought this was. I saw it too. I thought this was his one of his most Spielberg movies. Yeah, I agree. Completely. Um, it was two and a half hours. It was. I really liked it, man. It was very good. It was I really very good, it. but it was I don't not know the if best I want to see it again. Exactly. I don't know if I see You'll it again. never see it again. Yeah. Right. It's not a, obviously. It's not like it's not rewatchable yeah. uh, in like how you know Saving Private Ryan is right. a great story. But like, and I again, great story. Like it's a it's a based on a true story about mm. how you know they basically exchanged. It was about the exchange of you know prisoners of war between you know the the US, during the cold war and it's it's done really really well and how basically tom hanks character is like instrumental in this exchange and he's a lawyer it, that has to execute this change yeah and, and his, he's like a, he's a normal kind of lawyer he's yeah. not like a a war you know or, or a defense attorney yeah. i think he's not he has he's, no personal interest in this yeah the, the military just sort of the government just sort of dumps this on him yeah and so he kind of like gets strong armed into doing it but he's and like then he becomes yeah. emotionally invested in it yeah. obviously because he's very good at what he does and so he gets to know the he gets to know the, the spy who is living in new york yeah. who's play i can't remember his <clears throat> actor's name but he's so good he in this very film. good he had, very, he had hardly any lines because he just like stood there like didn't say anything yeah. for the most part which is what made it really hard for tom hanks to like do what do his job yeah. um <laughs> tom hanks is great at reacting at things oh he's, <laughs> he's so good um but yeah, yeah. so great movie sure next no. Okay, next, I'm going to run through a couple of movies that I know none of us have seen. Yeah. Okay. Brooklyn. Not seen. Nope. No opinions. Nope. Room. Nope. Again, not seen. But I, there's a great there iPad a, game called The Room. If you've played it, it's <laughs> there's another amazing. There's a movie for an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> have you That's guys, a pretty great iPad game. Have you guys game. seen the cult classic movie? Which one? The Room from like the early 90s. Is it the... Tommy yeah, Wiseau. The, the, oh, yeah. The, have you seen that? The horror yeah. film, right? The, no, it's not horror. No, it's the, it's like the one of the worst movies of all time. Yeah, which it's, one? It's, a, yeah. it's a black comedy. Yeah, so... Or I'm dark not, comedy, black comedy. Kind of like e- the Evil Dead um, kind of vibe. N- no, it's, well, it's... Evil Dead is a great movie. Well, no, it's I'm not, not a I'm comedy. Not about so the, the thing about the movie, the reason it's so bad... Oh, you mean like a self-aware horror movie? It's a real movie. He made a serious movie. That is so bad. Yeah, it's unintentionally funny. To sort of like sort of save himself, he called it a dark comedy when... Like he he saw the reviews, yeah. scathing reviews that were just so poor that they were like they didn't know if he, what he <laughs> tried to do. So like when he said yeah. oh, it's actually dark comedy, like oh well in that case I guess it's, it's like, great. Well, oh, it's, it's just <laughs> excellent work. You so know, when yeah. I saw movie terrible. Oh, so you guys saw what I was going for, right? Yeah, <laughs> I was trying to make a terrible movie. Yeah. <laughs> That's there are true. so many drinking games to that on the internet. Uh, yeah, there I, are so. Is, many but is that what happened with Evil Dead though? Like you know, the the weird thing about Evil Dead is mm-hmm. like the first movie is a serious horror film and it's mm-hmm. pretty scary. And the second one is an like out and out comedy. I don't know how yeah. they, how, why did they like why I never understood how or why they did that. Like was it like did I they think just, there might be some backpedaling there too? Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. that, you know, some of the like it seemed very no, self aware. It's very self aware that it's a comedy, but like I don't know why they were just. I think they maybe must have seen it like, and they were like, "Wow, this is too serious. It's this is not who we are. We need to make comedies." And just like it's like the funniest film, both even the this the third part. What is the third part called? Evil Dead. I, I, when he goes back into the past, I don't think he, I've seen that. Oh There's man, a, I haven't seen it. Oh my god, yeah. Evil Dead is like one of my favorite like series <laughs> like ever. It's just so. And now Ash versus Evil Dead mm-hmm. is on, which is great. Apparently, are you watching? Y- no, I, it's on. It's on. St- like stars is producing it. So I don't. Mm-hmm. Is that the network? Or is it that? Is that stars is the is it's the, the net- channel? Yeah, the network. The cha- yeah. So I've I've not ha- got my hands on it, but it's, apparently it's amazing because Bruce Campbell is like <laughs> Bruce Campbell. Yeah, okay. it's Bruce Campbell. So <laughs> All right. uh, yeah, Where man. Moving on. Spotlight. Really want to see this? Yes. No idea. Uh, do we know anything about it? 
It's a mo- it's a movie about this. See, this is why I it's think not it's not science fiction. Let's it not talk win. about it. It might win because it's again. Spotlight it's one of those is a 2015 American biographical drama film directed by Tom McCarthy and Best written by picture. McCarthy and yeah. Josh Singer. This it's, is just what I know personally. A, I'm just like off the top of my head. It's an economic. I think the film follows uh, the Boston Wall Globe's Street. spotlight. Okay. No, one's, no Wall Street. Yeah, yeah Boston Globe. Yeah. Right. <laughs> oh right, yeah, yeah. Close. Oh, oh, wait. <laughs> I remember Close. this now. So it's a, it's about uh, how the Boston Globe discovered the whole Catholic Church scandal. Okay, I see. All right, yeah. all right. Like the so I get it. Stuff. Yeah. I feel like they f- they do favor like a few directors also. I feel like you Definitely. know like uh, yeah. what's that guy Tom Hooper, the guy who made uh, King's Speech, mm-hmm. who won that year. In fact, over Why did that movie win? over over the, over Social Network, and I yeah. was like, Which, that was yeah, a great was disappointment. Yeah. 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 But I was really hoping the, like the you know the what is it, like with the Oscar the Academy Award. The Academy, I the guess. Academy. Mr. Yeah. Academy. Yeah. Mr. Academy Award <laughs> we would have just, you know, like, picked a more current, more relevant kind of film like yeah. The Social Network. Over. And that was a great film. It was Fincher's... Such a good film. You know, Fincher's rarely made a bad film. Mm-hmm. The yeah. only bad film he's ever made is Aliens 3. Oh... I haven't seen that. What? Yeah. what? Do I want to see that? Dude, no, it's awesome. It's if you love, do you love Alien? Are you an Aliens fan? I'm an Aliens fan. Yeah, then you have to watch it. It's like, <laughs> you got to watch everything. Resurrection, you got to watch <laughs> Predators. I'm a Terminator fan, but I don't have any intention of watching. No, but I know. feel like AV, like uh, AVP, like Orange Aliens and Predators Wars. are like, I don't know why, but a lot of people find them to, like in the same universe. I think it <laughs> happened because uh, in Predator 2, the one with, uh, not Crispin Glover, uh, Danny Glover? Yeah, yeah, the actor. Yeah. yeah, so he, in that, so basically, he goes into the spaceship at the end. Have you guys seen Predator Two? Oh mm-hmm. my god, you guys are looking at me like what? I- <laughs> Get out of this room! No. So anyway, at the end, basically, what happens is he goes into the Predator's spaceship. So if you've seen the first Predator, the spaceship kind of breaks into two parts. One goes into the city, and one goes into the jungle. Obviously, where Arnold Schwarzenegger is in the jungle, these guys are in the city, and so it's a full kind of urban Predator, you know, uh, battle and stuff like that. And at the, right at the end, he goes into the spaceship and he sees the trophy room and in the trophy room there is a skull of like the xenomorph so everyone's like oh my god the predators are hunting aliens and they're in the same universe and literally just that one prop mm-hmm. kick started the whole aliens the versus AVP yeah series. alien versus predator oh, yeah. thing huh. yeah also another film not nominated for the that Oscar. might have been yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that that one I kind of get though yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all terrible let's just let's just put it yeah. Yeah. the game is actually better than the movie The Revenant not seen, but not will seen, obviously yeah. watch because it. I mean, it's supposedly Leo's year. Yeah. So this is the one. I hope so. You think? I think so? Yeah. I by, so. by principle of exclusion, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he hasn't done it yet. Well, but, but also, again, it's. I mean, I know it's. It's an ensemble cast, but it's. No, it's not. not actually, actually, not, not as much. It's pretty much him. Yeah. Yeah. So it's pretty not I mean, as much Tom, as Tom Hardy's in it. Tom Hardy's also in it. Yeah. But yeah, this is and again. But again, it's it's one of those movies that it's about one man versus the world. He's gonna have like the most amount of screen time by a mile and a half, probably. I, I don't actually know. don't know what the film is about. Do of you know what a revenant is? No, nope. no, nope. neither uh-uh. do I. Yeah, I, I know what the, the covenant the, is. It's something. Of, isn't it something about <laughs> the dude? Like he gets mauled by a bear, and then like they try to keep him alive, and or something yeah, so, like that. Um, oh, okay, that's what it is. Very cool. Frontiersmen or hunters of some sort. Yeah, um, yeah. it's a period film, is it? It's it's a period film. Okay. Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio gets mauled by a bear and mm-hmm. left for dead yeah. on purpose uh-huh. by one particular guy yeah. Ooh. who I think it's is a revenge story the rev- revenant the revenge the revenge the revenge I like that so we word. don't know enough about this movie this is great though because I really want to watch it like that yeah I've seen the trailer and yeah, it was just shots of the film like there's no like yeah. story kind of yeah. idea given which is great there was just shots of Leonardo like crying I hate to say it but you know what and crying <laughs> Western filmmakers mm-hmm. should take a leaf out of uh, an Indian Bollywood trailer. Book. Yeah, what do you book. mean? Have you seen Bollywood trailers? Right. So they don't have anything about the story. So Bollywood trailers are three minutes long. Okay, yeah, it's something yeah. that you hate, but yeah, yep. okay. What they do is they take cutscenes from like they take entire bits of dialogue and just put them back to back and just get everyone. Us, like a sense of the film and that's it they don't reveal like not that well, there guess, may be I such a plot I, I, isn't that what BVS did with the whole <coughs> meeting Bruce Wayne meeting uh, no no but not like that Kent uh, and dude, no it's not, not, not exactly that. that's still like your, your like it's exposition you're fine and that's the start so dialogues to, um, without revealing the story yeah, yeah it's weird it's bad in Indian movie. I guess because they don't really have much of a plot <gasps> what I just dropped a whole <gasps> stereotype on something that has been named after Hollywood but just changing the first letter to B <gasps> and then you know people I just like, got that yeah you know people just take so much offense oh hey man how can you like not like Hindi films this is our I was like you guys have just first of all you've called it Bollywood 
Like, doesn't that bother anybody? Like, that we're literally riffing on... I think we're past that now, though. Th- I mean, that's like, so sad that we are, though. Like, we're just, like, okay with that. It's so weird. I don't know. I just find it really strange. Well, there was a whole movement where people tried to call it the Indian, Indian film, film industry. industry no, that's... It is what it is. It is fine, but, I mean, it never caught on, I think. Bollywood, so. man. And then there's, like, Dollywood and, like, uh, Lollywood. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's pushing that. it. Yeah, keep, my God. Anyway. I mean, I'm okay with Bollywood. It, it's just, like, it's a historical oddity. It's cool. Let's just... Yeah, it's a weird thing it's that so people... I know. Uh, uh, I'm saying, no, I'm, you, people use it... You know, they try to defend... You know, the whole thing's like, oh, try and be, you know, like when, when we say, oh, try and make, you know, normal films which have a story and a plot mm-hmm. and all that stuff. She's like, no, we're kind of catered to the masses. I have this fight with my mother a lot. She's <laughs> like, no, you, you have to cater to the masses. I was just like, okay, but if you're so proud of this style. No, you style, don't pander to your audience. Yeah. You don't like, pandering to your audiences should not be your, uh, yeah. your MO. But which is weird because that's exactly what geeks are doing in the films these days. That's right? true. They're doing a lot of fan I mean, like, that's, yeah. that's not so, I, I don't think that's a, that's an accusation you can level against. I agree. Yeah, no. Bollywood alone. Hollywood yeah, yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. You know, there are plenty of Mad shows. Max Fury Road. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, no, no. So, did you hear about how George Miller is not directing? Which anymore? is not a, like a, he backtracked yeah, on he, that a little yeah, while yeah, later. I, I where saw, he said, like, he that. just said, "I'm kind of exhausted," so yeah, I said yeah. that. But I might do it. Yeah. I might not. He I just want to do something different for he a while. Said, Leave me alone. I'm tired. I don't know what I'm talking about right now. He's old, man. Yeah, like. Well, I mean, sure, but Jesus, George Miller, man up. I mean, he took nine years to make that one. I can understand the dude is a little yeah. Like, no, but I maxed mean, out. Why? Oh, that was really good. I love it. I, I make songs. We aren't so <laughs> informed today. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know, man. Like, I, I like, wh- why is he like leave me alone? Like, I mean, he can just chill out, and he can just ju- like I said, Josh Lucas it. He can just. He could. I mean, the thing is, like, the movie just happened. It, it's still fresh in people's minds, and so people he, are asking him for like, yeah. you're talking about studios and stuff. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah. I mean, it, like, like we just talked about, you know, okay. to your audience. It's like, hey, you just gave us something awesome. Give us more right now. It's like, well, I couldn't make this amazing thing just, you know, out of thin air. Like, I needed time to do it. So I, I can understand the guy being a little just tired like you know i just worked my yeah i think it's long a process day. that's tiring him because he's spoken about the ideas he has already oh, yeah, yeah. Right? like he i mean uh, there's, yeah, there's, like, the there's something solo knocking thing, on in there. You know, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. no it's, i mean he's had like plenty of time to dwell on it i guess yeah. since the last one like he's just like had so much time he's, and he's and he set the bar so high like yeah. Yeah. i like how he assumed <laughs> george miller makes a movie and then just sits down and goes like well <laughs> <laughs> no i guess like, i'm not doing anything now i'm just saying like it took it, i mean we often reference the fact he took nine years to make this film you know yeah, right? yeah. and so in that time you know i i can't imagine how many times he's revised the, the story and, yeah, and stuff like that but i can say the first movie on this list uh which is in mm-hmm. you know the category of science fiction yeah. which really truly deserves to win do you think it's think it do, do you think it could win it Do you could. think they, I don't know I, I, I don't know if it, was, was, it won a Critics' Choice Award just, yeah? yeah yeah. Was it nominated for any Golden Globes Who also? won the Golden Globe? I forget Best Comedy The Martian Right, ah, no, but, but right. Who won this the drama? True. I will look it up Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Totally can't Can I have some music? <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding It's a Jeopardy thing Oh man that Dude, I miss Jeopardy, man yeah. Does uh, Alan Trebek still do it? Yeah, he does Yeah, he still Wow, I, I, I think I've seen a total of seven minutes of that show. Of Jeopardy? Yeah, I don't think it was. What? Yeah, Dude, that's the greatest Jeopardy. quiz show of all time. Well, <laughs> but Von Wieder quiz feud. contest. <laughs> yeah. then Jeopardy. Bon Vida, I bon love Wieder. Bon Dude, BQC <laughs> man, that was my jam in the nineties. What is Derek O'Brien doing? He he basically he does works for uh, Mamta Banerjee. Oh, I was not expecting that. Let's go there. Yeah. Whoa, okay. Let's go there. <laughs> what does he do? Is he quizzing her? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Just get your facts right before oh, wait, making a speech. Yeah. What happened to Bon Vita in general? Bon Vita? Yeah. It, it exists. Still is chilling. It still a thing? Yeah. I've it's not, it's it. not as in, intelligent. Like, don't have any more quiz contests anymore. But it's not. It's, it's not as intelligent <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like it's just be- behaving like any. Powdered form of like what <laughs> happened to Bon Vita, Milo, Ooh, and Gomez. My mistake. Oh, Mad Max did not win the Critics' Choice Award. Oh, Spotlight did. Ah, uh, see. Best actor Leonardo DiCaprio, best actress Brie Larson, best supporting actor Sylvester Stallone. Wait, is yeah. this you're talking about the Globes now? No, yeah. this is the Critics' Choice Awards. Okay, yeah. Best so director point. was yeah. Mad Max, George Miller. Oh, he won. That's great. He won, that's yes. so that's good. great. That I think hands down. Yeah, which is is a, a trend. I hope to. See. Is he nominated for for this year's Oscars also? Because that's the he problem, is, yes. man. You know, Christopher Nolan. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of the most relevant directors like obviously we yeah, love him, his movies so much but like he's just been ignored so much by the academy I don't know why I don't know why. like everyone 
really really respects this type of filmmaking it's kind of highbrow in that sense mm-hmm. you know it's a very high concept kind of art but like just he's never he's never been nominated for uh best director even though inception was nominated for best picture mm-hmm. he was not nominated for best director and i always find that really Which is strange because, yeah. and even the year that the dark knight came out so it was 2009 i guess mm-hmm. uh keith ledger you know posthumous he, he got the obviously he yeah. won right but i i think the dark knight was it, i think it was nominated but again best director uh, was it nominated Uh yeah I think so I okay. I think it was I mean for best know. picture I don't think so don't The Dark Knight I think Oh so. I think it's before the 10 nomination like before they started making yeah, it 10 films as best be. picture Why do they think they do that though like best director from the globes yeah. is well for drama The Revenant Okay No wait damn it uh, for drama <laughs> misinformation yeah, yeah, yeah no, I just yeah, 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 I, yeah. I named the movie instead yeah so in year 2 uh best drama motion picture the revenant best actor leonardo dicaprio well, it's kind of a sweep of the drama categories so i think revenant is the is poised Money is best the comedy revenant. the martian best actor in a musical or comedy matt damon i know really matt so like there, there's this whole thing where uh, let's talk Judd about the martian been yeah, uh, making fun of the martian going like i mean Hey man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not a comedy. Yeah, I yeah, know. Uh, yeah, no, uh, when the director went up to receive the award, like he himself like in his speech like he opens with like comedy, all right, fine, but I'll take an award if you're going to give me anything. Wow, yeah. that's always, really. That's always like, been it was a thing very, with the globe though, quick, though, where that distinction is kind of yeah. weird. No, and it's also musical or comedy. Yeah, exactly. I, I think it's just like an when, outdated when's thing. When's the last time a musical beat out a comedy for the best comedy or musical? Award? I think maybe Chicago. Chicago probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chicago. That is actually um, musical. Uh, yeah, I feel like Chicago is like the one that everyone is embarrassed about. Like, you know, they like how did it win Best Picture in 2004, mm-hmm. I guess? Then have the yeah, bunch crash people and best but why not millionaire went without a trace? I but you know, I still like some not going. I like it. I, like it. I, I think it's a good movie. You know, I was I was looking I was, I was reading this pretty great thing the other day about how Avatar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is how you say I, it. Yeah. Avatar. <laughs> Avatar. Avatar. <laughs> yeah, I was reading Avatar the same article. Avatar kind of disappeared without a trace yeah. after like being a cultural phenomenon for all of like no, so, eight months. So maybe. it was not a cultural phenomenon. That's what it was. It was yeah. a massive film and it left no cultural like... Yeah, because like, I think yeah, it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a technical milestone. It was a technological milestone. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's only relevant to people that are deeply invested it's in visual arts. It's only revenant... Arts. Huh? Am just I right? Nay. No. Go home. Okay, sorry. Mm-hmm. It's too good to miss. But you know, I think just I awarded the Golden Globe for best actor in a musical or comedy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> What if I sing my real, my joke out? Anyway, <laughs> what's but, next? Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, what's the next one? We're Avatar, talking man. about. Are we on Martian? We're on so Martian. Let's do Martian, but like after a break. You can listen to Cyrus Says from our apps on iOS, Android or our website cyrussays.in. You can also listen to services like iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud or your favorite podcasting softwares. It's cyrussays.in. Hey, we're back. You're listening to the Geek Fruit podcast. I cannot say the name of our own thing. I keep saying Greek. Uh, you know, it's I really easy. It's the Greek Fruit podcast. Uh, the Greek you nailed food. it. The Greek Fruit, right? Greek Is fr- that Greek food? The Greek Fruit. We we are talking about gyros and um uh whatever else. <laughs> and a mezze platter. <laughs> yeah. We no. know what I, you know what I realized though? Yeah. This podcast isn't on the radio. So nobody's like we're not that back back a while huh you know we're I mean? back. Like, it's like we're we are back. back like we never like went anywhere i mean like yeah we didn't go there was like but, one but they went on a spiritual journey of listening there was, there to other like, things there was one like 5 second ad or 10 second ad i think it's a little so longer than that no like no yeah and i and actually, about, i genuinely have never heard our show no yeah, that's a lie that's a f- uh, complete <laughs> lie like <laughs> like how do you think that all of the four people who listen to this show all the all the listeners are just sitting me. in this room they are just <laughs> like, yeah. yeah but man uh, s- uh, sorry i was just thinking about that mezze platter and i'm just like really hungry <laughs> i can't name any greek food hello what about a uh, go for it then karam made it for you them I said hummus. Hummus. No, no hummus. No, yeah, hummus. I mean, like, what? Middle Eastern food. <laughs> yeah, it has no. some overlap. It's like yeah, food. T- t- what? T- yeah, it's like yeah. it's that di- that Asian no. European divide. It's Mediterranean. It's like it's like oh, it this has is, Mediterranean this is true. <laughs> Spain and Italy. Yeah, I think mm. the podcast is far yeah, better suited better equipped to, to do this. If you want to yeah. listen to more intelligent people, <laughs> listen <laughs> to our podcast. Yeah, man, we were speaking about ramen ramen noodles, and I was just about to say them ads. Ramen noodles right in the middle of the show. is such an important thing for nerds everywhere right because that's how we binge and watch stuff actually that's everybody it's not yeah. just nerds why am i being so exclusive <laughs> <laughs> hey ramen noodles are our thing <laughs> it's ours we want you it you can love ramen too yeah the martian the martian we're look talking at, about the martian look at this guy this, this guy we so need him <laughs> we need him director ridley scott 
You have to quit your job, you realize. Have you, you do this now. <laughs> have you guys, uh, have you read the book? <clears throat> have you no. guys read the book? I did not read the book. Mm, yeah. And yeah, I did it. I did. It, I tried to read it before the movie came out. So, uh-huh. yeah. Which, and and anyway, it's a really interesting story, man. It has a great story. It's because uh, that book, and it's written in the form of like, you know, this like these blog, po- like mm-hmm. blog entries, because it's a journal, ultimately. Right. And like, he released it like one, like log entry at a time. Oh, wow. And on his website. On his website. Yeah, yeah. On his website. Yeah. And then it went straight to Amazon. Like, there was huh. no publishing of it until like that became wow. a phenomenon and on the I believe that was because people begged him for it they yeah. said like it was all up for free and they said can you just put it together and we'll pay for it so yeah. it's like cool I'll that's that. actually one thing that bugged me about the movie I was really hoping that there would be some payoff to him doing all those video diaries because the one like the first thing that yeah ground- you got a movie out of it man yeah. No, no, no. I mean, well, <laughs> that, uh, she's been nominated. All right. Is, do you yeah. want, Who's laughing now? Stuff. What else do you want? But, I mean, the fact is that the first thing that they say when Ground Control finds out that he's still alive is, um, Major holy Tom? crap, what's he going to mm. do? Too soon. Yeah, too soon. Too soon. Is what, what's, a, what's that going to do to a man if he's going to be by himself on a planet for a year or more? Yeah. Uh, what's the psychological turmoil he's going to go through? And there actually wasn't all that so, much. So here's the... And he does these, and he does these di- video diaries, which I would, you know, I'm yeah. sure anybody would want to do just so you can talk and like actually feel like you're talking to somebody even yeah. though it's an inanimate object. Yeah. But I was hoping that at the end they would do something with that. Like those video diary things would amount to something other okay. than just exposition for the audience to know exactly what he's doing because hmm. yeah. he other than explain to the audience you know why I'm taking human feces and you know putting stuff putting potatoes putting, into yeah, it yeah. it would take you a while to figure that out if he didn't talk you through it so I realized it was a narrative yeah, uh, it was device. A device obviously yeah. it's a narrative device it's a narrative yeah. device but I was hoping that that being such a uh, frequent yeah, yeah. narrative device I was hoping that it would lead to something which hmm. it didn't so it was just sort of like I mean, it's, a, it's what kept him yeah. alive, I, I guess. I guess, know? yeah, but like, yeah. I just didn't see but the so turmoil. I, I, in that. I have a number of like issues with it. The first one, and I know we can all agree on this, too soon after Interstellar was mm. Matt Damon found on a planet by himself, <laughs> right? And with Jessica Chastain also in the film. Yeah. Like, let's just address that. Yeah. It was too close. Like, it was too close to Interstellar. <laughs> uh, I mean, obviously, apart from that, I read the book. So here's the thing about the book, right? And it was the criticism of the book, but it's also been... Uh, said that this is just a character trait for his character, and uh, Mark Watney. Mark Watney. Yeah, yeah. Watney. Yeah, uh, it's that he has zero existentialism in the book. Yes, right. So he doesn't ever address his loneliness in the universe or anything like that, which is actually where he is. At. And in the book, also, like he's the youngest of the crew. And like that's why even the casting of Matt Damon was just like for me. He, like his entire crew is like like at least ten years younger than him yeah. in the movie. Yeah. But in the book, he's the youngest, and that's why he's like the most like. You know the the cheekiest or you know mm-hmm. like the smart ass of the of, yeah, of the group, and that's really what keeps him alive. Is that you know he never thinks too much about you know being alone, and he just like he's always ha- he always has a joke. There's like one great I think and they adapted like uh, quite. I think uh, that comes properly. across in the movie as well. That yeah. one thing where basically they they find out that he's stuck on the planet, and they're like, mm-hmm. oh, wow, I would really wonder what he's doing up there. And then it, in the book, it's just like, wow, and he and he's like done with the TV series and he just makes like a, a joke about like happy watching days? Yeah, I think it's happy days yeah. yeah and it's just like so funny in the book and I feel what they tried to do with the movie is that they tried to address the existentialism and kind of keep it funny so mm-hmm. it became like this weird mishmash of, of they could have I mean maybe they should have it wouldn't have been a Ridley Scott film otherwise that's my that's what I felt that's true but yeah. I mean it, it's got a much lighter touch than most Ridley Scott movies I agree true Full which is why it's a comedy or musical. Or music. Well, it's not a lot of disco music. <laughs> yeah, so, there was a which I enjoyed. Music. So yeah. I actually like The Martians. I haven't read the book. Yeah. So maybe I'm not like uh, I'm. I'm not going off that. I went to it like with a blank yeah, state yeah. pretty much, and I enjoyed it. And I, I think stuff like uh, the fact that he doesn't think too much and just goes like, okay, there's work to do, and moves on with it. Kind yeah. of like it plays with the character a bit. I mean, so I guess I Matt Damon worked. tried to just also amp it up by you know giving him some kind of soul. Yeah. yeah. But that that's again my like. No, and and I don't want to be that guy who's like, oh, the book was bad. There's that really good uh, comic. It's like a one-panel thing of two goats, and he's eating a film reel. One goat is eating a film reel, and it tells the other the book was better. <laughs> 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 so again, I don't want to be that guy, but like, I, the I feel like the best parts of the book were just like how light it is and like how sciency it is. Yeah, and I, that I, was not. That's a criticism I've heard a bunch. Yeah, where the book was way more focused on the science. Yeah. It was just very forgettable for me. Like, yeah. I'm not going to remember this movie in six months. 
I'm yeah, not going to talk so about I, this movie. I thought it was an like, enjoyable watch. Yeah, maybe exactly. not. Yeah, it was not Oscar worthy at all. Enjoyable. No, no probably not Oscar worthy. Because yeah. I really wish a science, like a space film, yeah. you know, would get like, you know, more like, and just this like, one. I feel, I feel like an Oscar nominated movie needs to be one that like stays ingrained in my head like, uh, like, like Gravity. Birdman. Birdman, Gravity. Dude, These movies yeah. like did something super special mm-hmm. that made a long lasting impression. Yeah. For be- like, they all had, you know, like a, ups and downs like that's just art but right. I mean this one was just like pretty cookie cutter yeah. in a lot of ways I very cookie like, cutter you're right there's also. nothing about it that like really stood out for me okay yeah no you're right it, it yeah. is quite forgettable having said that though I mean we're giving a lot of like slack and saying you know oh science fiction films are never taken seriously but Gravity did win mm-hmm. and it is a it's a drama but it's set in, it's set in space, space so. and that's great and and it was <clears> it's <throat> one of my favorites actually from I'll the tell you one thing that recent. Gravity has now done for me that I can't like forget or I can't like unsee now like at the end of Martian when uh, they do the rescue mission and mm-hmm. then Jessica Chastain is on that belt and she's like floating trying to catch him yeah. and then he Iron Man's him his way back to her Yeah, and she's in that sort of that jetpack thing yeah. that they also had in Gravity which yeah. was a big part of Gravity yeah, so yeah. now like every time I see that I think of Gravity yeah that's true um, so you know like when they do it, try and do the space walk kind of yeah, thing yeah, right? yeah. yeah and so like with Birdman you know like now if I see like a really prolonged one shot I'm gonna think Birdman so like that's what I think that's good Oscar, right? that's a good thing like, yeah, a great do, thing. do something Memorable. no matter how big or small it is yeah. do something that I can't unsee I can't forget mm-hmm. yeah. you know like these are all tropes of movies you know like we, we have a gimmick in this movie we have a prop or we have a you know we have a line or something like now you can't say I am your father without my thinking Star Wars you know what I mean it's yeah. like it can be as tiny as that or it can mm. be a big grandiose thing like Birdman. So there were no amazing moments in the Martian. There was no amazing moments in the Martian. There was nothing that I hadn't seen before. Yeah. Nothing that, yeah. you know, okay. really... Well, it's funny you mentioned that. You know, the whole Iron Man thing which he does at the mm. end which is puncture a hole. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he says it in the books. He's like, hey, I've got this really crazy idea. Maybe I'll punch a hole in my in my glove and then I'll use yeah, it to like, propel myself. And they just shut him down like instantly. They're like, <laughs> that's a ridiculous idea. Mm. And you wouldn't like... And it's like, clearly it's like one of those things which translate from book to movie. It's like, it's like uh, at the end of Watchmen, mm-hmm. uh, when, uh, if, what's his name, Veidt, uh, Osmandius, yeah. mm-hmm. he says, what do you think? I'm just a, I'm not, do you think I was just like a comic book villain? Mm-hmm. And in the comic book, he says, do you think I was just like a movie villain or something? Oh, like? right. So yeah, so right. I love it when they do that. And in this, I think they say something of the sort where there's like, that wouldn't, ha- that might happen in a movie, but maybe not like this in the real world, yeah. it doesn't happen. The and he does it in the movie. Bit. Yeah, it was yeah. quite meta. I love that kind also, of Also, small little thing is that I really felt like Michael Pena was just playing the same guy that he played in Ant-Man. Ant-Man. <laughs> Which, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I, mean, I, love, I, I love that. He's like, a great like, actor. No, but I mean, like, slightly more but it was serious guy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, he's an He was a bit more serious. He's been doing this now. He he's was, done, like, some really serious movies. But he was just the comic relief again, oh, in, in a lot of ways. To that yeah, group. he's, he's, the, he's the smart ass. Actually, yeah. his character is what, I mean... Yeah, Matt Damon was too old for this role. My God, <laughs> retire this man already. So maybe because you had something in mind because you read the book? Because yeah, I, I, mean, I, I was like, okay, Matt Damon's the guy. But cool. I think mm. I think they picked him because they wanted somebody that has, that has experience, experience and can basically <laughs> carry out 90% have you been in a spacesuit before? <laughs> Dude, but, you know, anyone could have done this role, man. I don't understand No, no, I, I think they knew, yeah. like, this is the kind of movie, like I said, sort of like in that castaway vein, it's all about just one guy for the most part. Yeah. And we need somebody yeah, that so can, I, I need somebody that can carry the movie. could have done it, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, Ridley well, Scott I, I, I thought Matt Damon did a good job, though. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, again, he it did. was not memorable. Like yeah. He wasn't bad. So I think the Definitely movie as bad. a whole. Like, I think Chris Pratt could have done this role just, also. Yeah, like really well. Probably. Like, because it's just like, I mean, it feels like Matt Damon for me is not a like, so comedic I don't think actor. replacing Matt Damon with anybody else would necessarily make the movie that much better. You'll okay, never know you know that. What, you I know what? Know. I, I don't if know. they were going for the comedy or musical category... I don't think they no, were. No, no, hear me out, hear me out. <laughs> I, don't I don't think Ridley mean, Scott went, I, this year, that comedy or musical category is mine. <laughs> you don't Ridley know. Scott, yeah, I don't know that. You don't know Mr. Scott like I know him. <laughs> but uh, I think, even though it's the cliche, what if it was Mark Wahlberg? What well, if? I mean, if I think Matt Damon is too old, Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg is yeah. definitely too old. He could have done it, but just like with his Boston accent. Exactly. Yeah. Really, like, <laughs> I'm going to grow some potatoes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, say hi to your mother for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> say that again one more time. Park the car in Harvard Yard. <laughs> <laughs> You've just been like, hey, say, uh, hey, donkey. 
How you doing? <laughs> would, would say hi to your mother for me, okay? <laughs> that's what that's Mark Wahlberg. Yeah. That's the Andy Samberg impression yeah. <laughs> of Mark Wahlberg. Hey, say, say hi to your mother say for hi, me, okay? <laughs> say hi to your mother for me, okay? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. That. I, I can't do Mark Wahlberg. I like your Mark Wahlberg. Alan Rickman on the other hand, <laughs> almost. <yeah. laughs> All right, what's Though, left? One of the best space. Well, it's not a movie, but one mm-hmm. of the best things I've seen about space uh, is like around three thirty. I was on this YouTube random like click the next link type thing where mm-hmm. I saw this half an hour guided tour of the international. Space Station, oh, wow. Wow. which is I've not seen so that. good. Sunita Williams does it. Yeah, hmm. Sunita Williams. Sunita. And yeah, it's 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 amazing. It's mm-hmm. as good as like any space movie you're gonna see. Yeah, it's great. Huh. Wow, that's awesome. Well done. Mm-hmm. No, actually, but, so they, um, small. Astronaut. Like the space station is it's so cramped. Like, Did you see uh, <laughs> Scott Ke- Scott Kelly? Some um, no, I, Scott yeah, Kelly. Scott Kelly. Kelly. He was on Colbert. He was on Colbert. Yeah, 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 like yeah. a seven-minute yeah. interview. Of yeah, that. That yeah was, but that like hands down my favorite. And he's been in space for ages now. Over a year. No. He's done the nine. No, I think it was about nine he's months the, right now. He, it's, he's he will be there for over a year. Yeah, and he's been there like four times. This is fourth trip. This or is his fourth trip. Yeah. Wow, man, Chris Hadfield was my favorite. Though. <laughs> yeah, he's like the best. He did the the the, the Bowie the, the Bowie, the Bowie, Bowie cover, right? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like this guy. He started Chris this Hadfield. whole trend of like savvy. Astronauts. He was such a savvy guy. Like he was yeah. so social media like <laughs> friendly, and every and this is this is awesome and very relevant to our conversation. So like. Um, he kind of um, so apart from like answering everybody on Twitter, people would just tweet, and he, fourteen minutes later he'd reply because <laughs> no, there's no time lag. I think in the ISS. Uh, no, is is there not? I don't think so. I think they'd be in a lot of trouble if they're, <laughs> they're like, oh crap, there's a delay. But dude, uh, you know, can the they thing. see the tweets before they go out? Because like, <laughs> they just went in the other direction. Are they in the future? Are <laughs> uh, yeah, they. I think the they are. digital future. Uh, well, if we oh, have okay. to get really spacey about Send it, that to Nolan. Okay. Let him make a screenplay about that. But you and know, digital. so he would just reply to everybody, and then w- once um, William Shatner hailed him, okay, saying, you know, I, Chris Hadfield, you're awesome. You don't want to just have a comment, and they just like spoke. It was awesome, and you know, he was just like, I can't believe I'm speaking to you know Captain Kirk, and you know, it was just like awesome. That was one really awesome thing they did, and secondly, and also because all three of us are musicians, and you guys will hate this, but. Chris Hadfield jammed, had a live jam, like he jammed with, uh, I think, I can't remember, the Bare Naked Ladies, I think, was what? it? What? Really? Yeah, on Earth. I love the Bare Naked Ladies. And they jammed. We can't do a jam properly on Skype on <laughs> Earth because of the lag, but these guys sorted it out, <laughs> you know? So, I don't know, man. That was like, it was it was so well, awesome. Well, I mean, they, they can, China, I'm, China, I'm pretty China, sure chicken. they can, you know, like, yeah. adjust bandwidth. If they <laughs> have the they I think they have the, they, the technology. There's no one hogging the Wi-Fi on the ISS. <laughs> Who's downloading like torrents? <laughs> Which wow. that reminds me, William Shatner reminds me. We mm-hmm. were talking about Shakespearean actors in sci-fi and how that's a ref. Yeah. Yeah. I actually don't know if it is because I mean, yeah. you've got uh, James Patrick Earl Stewart, Jones. William Shatner, uh, James, James Earl Jones, Jones whose birthday was Ian McKellen, face, yeah. Alan Rickman. I think like I think it's something they actually enjoy doing. I think I think that's why they even like hired in the first place. It's just that mm-hmm. they, like I think because science fiction anyway is like a it's like a wild it's operatic. Form of, it's incredibly yeah. theatrical. Yeah, and they need somebody to kind of hold it like yeah, hold they, this they crazy think adventure. That, they they, they realize, it feels real yeah, I think they realize that like, Gandalf is like such a wild out there character that in the books all these other characters are giving him so much you know bow bow. Yeah, yeah, basically <laughs> we need somebody that already can do that there will be definitely like yeah. like Patrick Stewart can like read you the phone book and you'll think he's like reading off like you know mm-hmm. the bible yeah um, <laughs> wait so, the phone book should I, should I do my Patrick Stewart please go name one uh, name one I, what I, I was trying to do the phone what? book Except, you have just there's gone. no name one oh, this God. Is, <laughs> name one you should, just, you should have just been <laughs> like great. I am Cap- w- Captain w- what does he say uh, what does he say uh, Starlog Starlog yeah. Starlog start it Stardate. Or how about Captain's Log? Eric, yeah, this yeah. is not the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah, he's Patrick so Stewart. So we can't is, do impressions. Is Xavier, man? That's so he's cool. Xavier, yeah. He's like that's another thing. They already look the part. Like I mean, Patrick Stewart was always Xavier. Yeah, he I was mean, always bald? Xavier. Is that is he was that the only was, credential? But I the think. only thing is, the, I think that what the, the down mistake was the, not a mistake, but it was not miscast at all. They like they were great. They're great actors. I just felt like they were really old mm-hmm. when the first X Men came out in two thousand. They were already just like really kind of like already over 50, I guess. Both of them. Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah and yeah. Uh, like Xavier and like in their, they are all in their prime right in the, in the comics. Like, you know, and they're just slightly older than the rest of the X-Men. I don't know why they cast them. So, and then they had to do like something like first class to kind of de-age like them. Retcon the yeah, retcon, yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Oh, so what were we talking about? What were we talking about? We were talking about movies uh, in the Oscars. Trends. So what we haven't 
talked mm-hmm. about is mm-hmm. why science fiction is ignored. I mean, it's the same thing that you know people just don't take it very seriously. They just think it's set in you know. Ooh, I think it's the same reason and comedies and never win. That's true. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Comedy other than in the Globes, which is <laughs> yeah. just a, which I think they have had to make a separate I, category. I, I, yeah. Yeah. And it, the even, Globes are just a joke. It didn't even like, get its as own as far as category. I'm I couldn't <laughs> care less about the Globes. I now only watch the Globes for Ricky Gervais, yeah. man. That's it. And actually, I can also do that for the Oscars too. I don't really care that much about who's who hosting wins. this year. Eddie Murphy? No, no, Chris no, no. Rock. Chris Rock. Oh, Ooh, he's great. He's uh, he'll kill it. He's that was racist, whole, by the way. Huh? That was that was just a little bit racist. Just cause, what, why? Just because he's because he thought just because Eddie Murphy small black comedian. No, mm-hmm. Eddie Murphy was supposed to host last year, and what? then he, he was? yeah, really? and then he backed out on it like at the last moment. Oh, yeah. Well, so then. screw you guys. <laughs> For that was a little presumptuous of me. Y- wasn't that it? was racist of you. That was almost that was like a me? yeah what? that you thought I was no. being racist and I wasn't actually. Anyway, <laughs> speaking of racist, no actors of color this? nominated this year, which is yeah. which is I think yeah. becoming yeah. quite an actors issue. Actors of color is pretty racist. <laughs> 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 uh, Just think about there, how is there no brown guy nominated? There's no brown or black people nominated at all. Nope. What about beige? The one nomination for Creed, which <laughs> went to Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> went to Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> but I'm sure he's excellent in it. He he's is, a, yeah. he did great Wait, in did his he, films. Did he get an Oscar nom? <laughs> yeah. He yeah. did, okay. Cool. Dude, Supporting. I would love to see, I want him to win it. I really, Have you guys seen Creed, but I've no, still I not seen it. Know. I really love Rocky, man. It's like... Somewhere. I've only seen one and two. What? Yeah. Just I did a binge where I saw one and two, but then I was like, okay, too much Rocky. I'll get back to it. I just never go back to Dude, it. Dude, Rocky yeah, is I the think greatest. It's, I don't think Rocky's bingeable. Yeah. It's like... Uh, watch one. Very marathonable. Sorry, really? guys. Well, the I've one good it. thing is that they're short. At least the first couple are like only ninety minutes, no, no, they which are, I like. All of them, are, I, you know, all the same when story, I see dude. a movie, when I see a movie that's ninety minutes, I just like see that the run time is ninety minutes. I just get very happy because yeah. like, this is good. This is not going to be too much. If it's bad, I didn't waste too much of my time. And it's mm-hmm. like it's ninety minutes is a good amount of time to get a really no. solid. Hour. What is your favorite like running time? Your preferred running time is. Ni- what is your favorite running time? Might be the geekiest question we've ever asked. Ninety three <laughs> and twenty seven. <laughs> I love it when a movie is ninety six minutes. I don't know, man. I, I like I prefer something that's about two like, hours. Not Woody com- Allen movies are almost always ninety minutes, and yeah. that's great. Like it that's ne- because he it comes from that school. comedy school. Yeah, that comedy. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah, it's a perfect you know three act three act structure. structure yeah, thing. It's but I I I think I I enjoy it when it's like just about like two hours. Just like you know, especially if it's like really like Inception, all right? Inception mm-hmm. was like two and a half. It was two and a half, Oy. so it was a little long. But Oy. like, I'm glad but it, it takes it takes the time to kind of build up. Like, and that's yeah, what most I'm, I'm films not saying do. There are clearly there are a lot of exceptions to this rule, I'm, and I'm not saying that exceptions it's a rule. to this rule. Oh my! Huh? I did it again. Bye. Come on, guys! Inceptions to this rule. I'm that's gonna great. start singing again. Musical or comedy? <laughs> <laughs> That's Please. so sad for comedy, by the way. It didn't even get its own category. Like, it has to share yeah, one. Drama <laughs> and like, hey, comedy, stand over there yeah. with musicals. <laughs> so, th- there are so many more comedies than, I think, are there more comedies than dramas in general? That's true. You know that's what I mean? Because there are hardly that's any... That's a way question. <laughs> there are hard, no, I mean, like, every year, there are hardly any musicals, right? There are hardly any musicals in it. There's hardly any musicals, musicals I yeah. think... But comedy I think comedy drama like probably they're probably even, even. and I think yeah. musical is the one that just got like you know pushed, pushed in, in with with comedy. It's just that oh, I guess if you're a musical, you you gonna be funny, and then uh, you know this why does horror not get Jack? Limas Rab well, came, there are came way down. fewer horror movies to start with. That's it. Have they, so like, here's what here's how it is. Shining win anything? It should Kubrick. I don't think he was ever. No, Clockwork uh, hmm. Orange was. Did it win anything? No, it was nominated. Did it win? No. No, it didn't win. We're going to find out. Yeah, but I think it was nominated. Was it in the comedy category? Or musical? It could have been. It <laughs> totally no could idea. have been. If you you can watch... Cl- have you seen this re-edit somebody did of The Shining? They recut the trailer as a comedy the and it's hilarious. The Shining was the only one of Kubrick's last nine films to get no nominations at all from either the Oscars or Golden Globes. But was nominated for a pair of Razzie Awards? What? 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 The Shining? Are you serious? But, you know, Kubrick has always been way ahead of his time. It's, it's yeah, fine. True. It's totally cool. I think they can... Uh, so the speaking of the Razzies, by the way, they've started a new category this year. What is it called? I, I don't know what it's called, but basically it's like it's like wh- whoever was nominated last year but did, had a really good year this year. Oh, oh. like the best so turnaround, you, yeah, kind of turnaround kind of thing. And so nice. like a couple of people. That's cool. <laughs> I can think like I think Ben Affleck has been nominated or something. Really? Yeah, yeah, something. Like what that. did Ben Affleck do this year? Mm, this year. What's he uh, oh, So last, last, was last year was Gone Girl. Gone Girl. There Gone you go. Girl. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I love that movie. So yeah, much. I I really like. I it. need to see it again. Man. I'm 
curious yeah. if I'll like it more or less, but yeah, really good. Bad movie. Yeah, good movie. But anywho, wow. as we are approaching upon the end, the running time of this has been close to your favorite one, which is ninety <laughs> minutes, <A> little under. <laughs> I think the question on all our minds is: Will Batman v Superman win an Oscar? I think it'll win a Razzie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. we're pretty no. much done there. Then that was yeah. easy. There's yeah. no chance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh man, I really hope that movie's good. I mean, it's 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 looking more and more doubtful, but I. <laughs> I'm holding out hope. Yeah. I think at best we'll all go for it with hey, like really. It, it l- might just be the best musical or comedy you see <laughs> next year. That's true. You know, actually, uh, sorry, this is another really nerdy aside. <laughs> but uh, so the guy who does uh, Batman for me, Kevin Conroy, Conroy, he's a great like blues and jazz singer. What? And everybody, so Andrea Romano, who produces, who's the voice director for all the DC animated stuff, like right from the animated series to to everything, they all kind of had this inside joke that we have to get Kevin Conroy to sing. But the thing is that in something, but the problem is he's playing Batman. Yeah, Batman. Is, you know, so it was impossible. So huh. then they finally did it in one episode of Justice League Unlimited, where. Uh, I can't remember who it is, but there's a villain who can transform. She's got magical powers, and she transforms Wonder Woman into a pig. All right, and so as a as a gag, okay, it's like she just does it to annoy the Justice League. So, so is that Wonder Pig? Yes, Wonder Pig. Wonder, Wonder Pig. Pig. Not the that's same the theme that. song as Wonder Woman. I don't know. If We're she doing has the that. Simpsons movie. Yeah, that's Spider Pig. Spider Pig. Yeah. yeah so uh, so anyway, she gets converted into a pig, and then Batman kind of. Chases her and finally gets her to, and finally, so she says, "If I have to, he corners her and he's like, okay, I'm, I'm the only one who can change her back. And if you want me to do it, there's one thing you have to do." And he's like, "Oh no, I, you know, something like that." <laughs> and then it cuts directly to Batman singing at this jazz club, and he sings, "Am I blue? Oh my god, Am that I sounds blue? amazing!" And like, it's so funny because Wonder Woman is back and she's just chilling with that villain, and this, and they're just both crying, and this is like, wow, it's so beautiful, and she's like. Yeah, you can tell him to stop now, and he's like, "Not on your life." <laughs> I'm not gonna like let him sing for the whole of the episode. And that you episode know, won best musical or comedy. I think the Batman animated series won a lot of uh, like primetime Emmys. Hmm? Really? Yeah, yeah, it did like a what? lot. Yeah, so did Samurai Jack actually. You know who is another superhero that sings really well? Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. Yeah, did you know? yeah. Did you, there, there was an episode in Ali McBeal. Don't ask me how I know this, but there was an episode in Ali yes! McBeal yeah. where he is. Trying to, he's of, trying yeah. to impress I think Alan McBeal I think yeah <laughs> uh, and they're at some like <laughs> what are the they're, they're at that like that a jazz club or something <laughs> okay. and he's like hey I brought my friend I and Sting comes out yeah. yes. so and they sing uh, Every uh, Breath You Take and they've done uh, so Sting also featured him on his show one of his, one of his live shows and they did um, um, oh he has God. an album by the way Robert Downey Jr. he has an album mm-hmm. he might have several I think yeah he so like, does. He so like does. Sing sings. Hugh Laurie. Hugh Laurie. Very good. Is, he is very really good. good. It's really good. He plays like multiple his, instruments. His piano is just Ooh. amazing. Ooh. Yeah. A lot, I don't know if this. I think yeah. This, it's, it's just it's a second talent for a lot of people. J J Abrams, we were talking about the other day. Yeah, mm-hmm. did the music. Did, did the music. He started sang. out as a composer. Did you yeah, know that? Yeah, yeah. I had no idea. That's crazy, yeah. Oh, Love how they all gave up their dreams. Look at them stuck making Star Wars. I know. It's what sellouts. But anywho, we need to move to. Hey, we have yeah. a new like a little the jingly thing. Yeah, let's play for it. this thing that we do. Random news generator. Great jingle! Wasn't that a great <laughs> that was amazing. That, that was, was so, so cool. cool. Oh. Yeah. So speaking of the DC universe that we were just in, I have some news from that yeah. realm about Gotham, the show that I love so dear now. Yeah, I, especially <coughs> after season two. Especially only, really only after season two. Have you two. been catching? Have you been? Watching I am Gotham? not caught up in Gotham. Not have you seen season anything? Two? I've yeah, seen season one. Season one. Season one. Season one. Okay. I'm telling yeah, you, season. the only three people who saw that show are here. This is it's three of us. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, we all saw season one. We got well, through it. Let's just put it that way. Well, Fox news. Fox loved it so much that they are now oh, no. contemplating no spinoff series about the villains. Why? It is already Terry? about the villains. Thoughts, questions, comments, concerns. It's already Sarah, about the villains. I, I think th- we might be hitting peak DC universe. Yeah. <laughs> Can I just say something? You know yeah. what would be an interesting spin-off? Actually, uh, Bruce leaving and... No! I do not leaving? want to know anything about that guy. No, not he this actor. But I'm saying like... Well. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have the show without Bruce Wayne. And we should see a thing about him in like, you know, Tibet or something. It would be cool. It would Maybe, be different, yeah. like, not like Smallville where he's just solving, but it'll be like a, like a Game if of they, Thrones kind of thing. If they did a thing about him in Tibet, like right when Iron Fist is coming out and Doctor Strange is coming out, then it'll just be like the year of so, Tibet as far as... So let me just uh, you know make I mean? like the distinction. In DC, or it's Nanda Parbat. 
Nandaya. Nanda Parvat is where everybody goes. Yes. And in in Marvel, obviously, it's in the real world, so it's the best. Yeah. <laughs> Though I I I I think I misspoke. I said we've hit peak DC universe. I was just I didn't mean that DC universe. Yeah. I, oh. I still have hope for DC universe because I mean. Who do you have hope? So in? I feel. The Flash, the Flash, okay. yeah. great. No. Supergirl going great. Have you been Supergirl? watching it? Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. So, oh, uh, it's it's good. I saw a couple it, it's, of episodes. It's yeah. very much in the tone of the Flash. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't Arrow, have the great think, characters. So I haven't been watching Arrow, but from what I've heard, it's kind of like found its footing in as yeah. a more fun. Speaking show. Speaking of now. which, Ali McBeal, what in Supergirl? What isn't she? Yes, Is she, she's yeah. the boss. She's huh. Calista Flockhart. Yeah. No. Also, yeah. Han Solo's wife. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, that's the thing I would keep forgetting about, and every time I see like a red carpet thing, like see them on, yeah, in an well, like, show, oh, yeah, she yeah, just said, like, why is Ali McBeal there? All right, all right, why didn't he just get married to Carrie Fisher though? Like that would have been so cool. <laughs> I don't think that like, the amount of sass that Carrie Fisher has, and the amount she's of, so awesome, and the amount of like <laughs> stone cold grumps that you she know, may just be better off screen than what, on screen. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Carrie Fisher is. Yeah, she's just definitely, I, I like her so much more. Screen. She's so funny she's and irreverent. It's and she has hilarious. that dog she brings around everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Hilarious. Whatever his name is. I can't remember. But she's yeah. so good. But Sorry. Yeah, he's on that Conan episode. That was great. Yeah. Sorry, your random news of the day. Oh, uh, well, have you guys heard about Deadpool not being released in China? Yes, I did oh. hear about that. Yeah. Because yeah. it's, 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 it's too... Because it's too China. Because it's, yeah. it's China. That's why. Oh, yeah. Okay. Though, I did want to show you guys... Mm-hmm. This picture of a cat that looks like Adam Driver. I, I know this is a podcast, but like it's worth it. Oh my Whoa. god! We will <laughs> add a link. It's pretty much bang on. We will like, add a link. Go look it's for cats that look like Adam Driver. It's a thing, and Kitty it's great. Ren. Oh my god! Right? Kylo, <laughs> Kylo cat, Kylo. We Kitty, Kitty Ren. Kitty, Kitty, Kitty Ren is good. Kitty Ren. Yeah. We just, did we just make a hashtag? Yeah. <gasps> Kitty Ren. All right. Oh, uh, news wise. Yeah. This I found interesting. So it's uh, Christian Bale mm-hmm. drops out of. An Enzo Ferrari yes. biopic because he couldn't lose weight, weight in time. Yeah, he was having no, weight sorry, gain. gain weight in time. Yeah, huh. and that's his thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's <laughs> gaining weight is like his jam, hmm. and losing weight also. So I, I'm I'm pretty sure they went like, hey, Christian Bale, you know, it's cool. I mean, gain a little weight, it's fine. And he's like, nope, unless I'm the exact same weight, I'm not gonna do it. Huh. There's actually Ooh. a good uh, infographic of of like how he's like the actual weight he's had for each film Speaking that he's done. Speaking of yeah. of the weight gain stuff in The Martian mm-hmm. at the end of it when he's like scrawny, scrawny stuff. It felt Did he actually was that him? It no, really. It, I, it was I was not. take. I was sort no, of was put off. I was like, I think it was CGI. No, I think it was because like a body double. M- they never showed his face. They would only show his face like a tight shot of like a close up of his face, looking mm-hmm. raggedy. Oh, what, and then really? when, he, when you'd see him, like he, he basically you see him like that when he walks out of the shower mm-hmm. and like a big bump. Yeah. Butt shot, right? Yeah. And then they cut to the like, close up of his close up of his head. But when you see the his body, he's got like a towel over his head. So it could have just oh. easily been somebody else. And it felt mm. like well, it no, was. There's no shot of it together. There's no like, shot of his him. head. Yeah, because he's been looking healthy and fine yeah. in the last like two <laughs> like, years. It, I feel like somebody somewhere would have taken a picture of Matt Damon looking scrawny as all. Yeah, hell, exactly. Like, publicized, said, it publicized it. Publicized it. Exactly. And then in like the hype for the Martian being like, oh, he's. Going all out for this movie, it's going to be then epic. Then he would have been nominated for drama. There you because go. No, Chris Hemsworth just did the, that for uh, what's the movie uh, called? The, 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 the in the heart of the sea. Yes. In the heart of the sea. Yeah, yeah. that looks it's really fun. good though. Yeah. I haven't seen it yet. It was. It came and it left the theaters. Ron well. Howard, right? Yeah, yeah. Ron uh, Howard. Yeah, Ron what? Howard. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a Ron Howard movie. It's a Ron Howard really likes it's a Ron Chris Howard Hemsworth. joint. Yeah. He really likes. He really likes Chris Hemsworth. He's been casting him. He cast him in the last one also. Rush. Oh right. Was that Ron Howard? Yeah, that was Ron Howard. It was a great film. It was a really good film. Yeah. And Matt Damon watches Happy Days, which Ron Howard is a part <laughs> also, of. Also, in Rush again. was Daniel Brühl, who's playing mm-hmm. Baron Zemo in Captain America Civil War. There you go. Sebastian Stan yeah. was on the crew in Martian. That's true. And he had a really blank-faced, like, did you really just say that reaction when he made the Iron Man reference, which I just loved. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but I was oh, like, the Winter yeah. Soldier is just like, I will not entertain this. <laughs> <laughs> not really, in this movie, not yeah. in real life. Wow, yeah, that's yeah. cool. Yeah, nice. That's interesting. Uh, okay, cool. So I have some news. I don't know if you guys are fans of this, but so J.J. Abrams has been producing a film uh, for the last couple of years, which he's been talking about, and it was called something else. I don't know what it was originally called. And the trailer for it came out 
and boom at the end of the trailer they revealed the actual title of the film so like he's giving suspense for even his trailers right now it's called 10 <laughs> cloverfield, cloverfield lane yeah, yeah. and i l- i'm a huge cloverfield fan like we said really love that movie but it's not connected movie. to cloverfield is what i think i read it's, it's a it's, it's a spiritual the... sequel oh yeah. man such a weak term no but no but <laughs> it's called cloverfield it's got the same kind of titling like the original film yeah. had mm-hmm. is it and is like the it's, same it's, found it's, footage Uh, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, and, it's not. And it's not. It's a, like a proper film. And like, it's if you have you guys seen the trailer yet? No, I haven't seen no. it. No. So it's just basically like uh, these guys have. Uh, it's three of them. I can't remember. Uh, it's Mary Elizabeth Winstead, mm-hmm. who was uh, Ramona from yeah. Scott Pilgrim, and oh. um, also John McClane's daughter What? in Die Hard. Yeah. Oh. In Die Hard. Mary 4. Elizabeth Winstead. Oh. Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. These connections are everywhere. Huh. Anyway, so uh, actors do roles. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> yeah and uh, and and also uh, John Goodman's in it. Oh, I love yeah. John Goodman. He's the best. He's the best. I and he plays a kind of like so he's kind of playing this father figure, and mm-hmm. he has uh, these these two kids are there, and they're in this kind of bunker kind of thing after the I, what is supposed to be the death, and they're yeah. just getting bored. The whole trailer is ex- like it's amazingly well done, especially since you you hate trailers. You should yeah. watch this because it it doesn't. Do there's no talk like there's no speech in the entire. So it's just so like ten Cloverfield scene. Lane is it is it like a like a street full of Cloverfield monsters that just like no I think <laughs> it's basically and, like, like uh, they're uh, at ground zero of oh, like right. where this thing happened sure. and just looks it's awesome kind of like a spin off maybe no I think it's just basically of another story that happens after the events of it's a sequel yeah. It's essentially interesting. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's a continuous story. It's connected story. to the the yeah. original, but it's not same the same universe, footage same kind of yeah, style. Did you like Marvel? Cloverfield, by the way? Did yeah. you like it? I, yeah. I I was really I was it. definitely like engrossed in it. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. that, that's a word. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's yeah. a word. So I liked it a lot. The ending, I was hoping for a little bit more, but I guess. Where could they go from it? Yeah, from there, kind of a thing. But so, so the, yeah, it was, it was definitely it was very good. I, what I But really I, loved about Cloverfield, I kind of forgot about it, is that there's so much more to Cloverfield outside the movie. Like, if you read up about why this thing has happened, and yeah. it's about that same cola that he keeps featuring in all his films, <laughs> and it's gone in like. Uh, upset like some and if you basically watch the last frame of the film you see like a satellite basically falling into the sea and starting this whole you know chain of events that has made oh, like, there's a lot of like meta yeah, story yeah. A, uh, wait who yeah. made it again I forget it was produced by J.J. Abrams but, but I I'm not sure who directed it I forget it. Um, I really want to say Josh Trank because it's found footage but it's not <laughs> <laughs> but then what is Josh Trank going to do just as the last thing that we talk about today what is Josh Trank going to do now post Fantastic Four which was not At all, fantastic. Um, I don't know, man. Sleep for a long time. Director and Matt think Reeves. About it. Matt Reeves. Matt who? Mm, Matt Reeves. Reeves. Nope. Yeah. No, no idea. Yeah. No idea. But close. It's a JJ some. joint. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So we're done with today's episode. We discuss a lot of things. You can find all the URLs. I hope we're going to try and link all of this on our website, geekfood.in. Uh, you can hear our previous episodes also on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, etc., etc., and. Also on the website. Actually, primarily, go to the website, man. There's, <laughs> there's so much more there. Uh, but just actually, just a handful of more stuff. <laughs> but uh, there's there's lots more on the website. Yeah, man. Thanks, Dinkar. Do you want to make this a thing? Do you want to just bunk work and come to the studio now every week? Yeah, man. I'll pop in. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Look at him being all cool I, about it. Could I could I check in on the phone once in a while? Just I mean, I might be in the next room, but I just want to do like a phone thing. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be like, hey guys, how can, you doing? Can we have a phone filter on my voice throughout this episode? Oh my god, we can make that happen. <laughs> yeah, we okay, have the no, technology. No, let's not do it, that it, that. it already is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, man. So uh, yeah, good. Can, can you say goodbye and tata in, in your Alan Rickman. Uh, Alan Rickman voice, please? Yeah. Oh, we uh, actually, actually we'll do give them our email. Yeah, address. pimp out our uh, stuff. No, our social stuffs and all the as know, Alan Rickman. All the as Alan Rickman. You will have to contact Geekfruit at gmail dot com. That's actually the sorry. I'm just going to do subtitles for that. Yeah, please. <laughs> I think so contact you know. geekfruit at gmail dot com is an email address media? and go go for that. I, that is what I said though. No, is that is that not happening? Just just do what uh, you've been asked. Just, 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 just stick to the script. Well, goodbye then. Oh my God! Can we not no, have no, no, the social media? Yeah, no, social media. Oh, social social media. We are Geekfruit HQ no, across all that's social media. Boring. boring. Nobody's <laughs> listening now. No one's listening now. But Geekfruit HQ is correct. Why is no one listening? Oh my God! Suddenly they are again. <laughs> all right. Cool. Bye, guys. Bye, Jishnu. Bye, Dinka. Goodbye. Well, this podcast is over. Then you have my permission to die. Hey man, are you hungry? I am very yeah, perpetually hungry. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm peckish. All right. Then when about the time you get hungry, you should definitely listen to the podcast.
podcast. It's spelled p- powd because it's a it's, pun. No, it's not really. It's not it, a it pun. Is, I know it is a pun. Basi- it is a pun. Basically, their website is called the Daily Pow. Look, is it a pun or not? It's a pun. It's a pun. Is it fun? It's fun, I guess. Then do it. All right. So, if you like listening to our show, then you should definitely check out the podcast because uh, they're also pretty like Indian stuff, and they have a website called the Daily Pow, and they review a lot of things in and around the city, like you know, food and culture spots and city secrets. I don't know what those are, by the way. Are they like? Secrets in the city that we don't know about, and and they talk about like the the real gems of Bombay. So, uh, if you like it, uh, then you should definitely check it out. It's done by Purva Mehra, Pranoti Datta, and Amit Gurbaksani, who's like a great music journalist. And uh, yeah, they're really good at it. They are very charming people. I they're met they're them. awesome. Yeah, we we just met them, and they're really great. And their podcast is great as well. It's a fun pun, and you can Do find it. it on ivmpodcast dot com. Not podcast. The podcast can be found on ivmpodcast. Not podcast. IVMPodcast.com